Welcome to Vet Candy Watch, your weekly dose of the biggest stories and latest news in veterinary medicine. I'm Jeremiah Pouncey, vet student by day, vet candy host by night. Let's get started. Today, I'm bringing you the peer-reviewed lowdown on three stories that you need to know. The genetics of feline hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which, spoiler alert, it is complicated. Wild pigs turning neon blue. Thank you to rodenticides. And why dogs in well water homes might be drinking heavy metal cocktails. So let's dive in with citations because science is what matters. First up, feline hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. HCM for short, the most common heart disease in cats, and a genetic puzzle that just won't quit. A 2025 multinomic study published in the Journal of Veterinary Cardiology analyzed 138 cats, 109 with HCM, and 29 controls, using whole genome sequencing and transcriptonomics. And here's what they found. Number one, no universal genetic marker. Despite sequencing entire genomes, Researchers found no high-impact variants that explain HCM across general populations. Breed-specific links like MYB, PC3, and Maine Coons still apply, but mixed-breed cats, they're still a mystery. Number two, human parallels. They detected rare variants associated with human HCM, suggesting we might be looking at conserved disease pathways even between species. And number three, Transcriptonomics gave us a ton of clues. RNA sequencing revealed over 200 differentially expressed genes with the intraventricular septum showing the most dysregulation. So what does this mean for your practice? Until we have breed agnostic tests, focus on early screening, echocardiography for at-risk breeds, and keep an eye on emerging targeted therapies based on gene expression. And when clients ask, tell them that the science is working on it. Next up, a story so wild, you might think it's fiction. I know when I first read it, I thought that it was fake. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife issued an alert after discovering wild pigs with, wait for it, neon blue flesh. Yes, neon blue flesh. According to the Los Angeles Times, this is linked to diphosinone rodenticide exposure. And vets, this isn't just a wildlife issue. It's a food chain and client education problem as well. First, the source. Diphasinone is a second gen anticoagulant used in agricultural bait stations, often dyed with bright blue or green. Pigs are either eating the bait directly or getting exposed through contaminated prey. Second, silence, but very, very deadly. These pigs showed liver residues five times above safety thresholds. And here's the even scarier part. They were completely asymptomatic. Cooking doesn't break down diphasinone, so the risk remains for anything or anyone, even you or me, that consumes this meat. Third, the bigger picture of it all. A 2018 UC Davis study found 8.3% of wild pigs in California tested positive for anticoagulants, and that number is likely higher today. For vets in rural areas, here's your action plan. One, warn hunters to discard any blue-tinged meat and report the signings to CDFW. Two, advocate for integrated pest management. We need fewer anticoagulants, but more traps and barriers. And number three, watch for anticoagulant toxicity signs, whether it's lethargy or hematuria in dogs with pig hunting clients. And we all know how they're saying pigs are always flying, but they're not flying yet. They're just turning blue. And lastly, a sobering PLOS water study from August 2025 tested well water from 178 dog aging project homes. The finding, two thirds of dogs were drinking water with heavy metals exceeding EPA safety levels. Private wells means no EPA regulation, and that equals big risks. Top offenders, 
13 samples blew past EPA maximum contaminant levels for arsenic and lead. And there are risk factors. Homes near fracking sites had higher sodium and sulfur. Properties near railroads showed elevated manganese levels. But the good news? Reverse osmosis filters made a measurable difference, reducing both heavy metals and non-chronic illnesses in dogs. So here's what you can do. Number one, ask well water clients to test their water. There are cheap kits available through the EPA or even your state agencies. Number two, you have to recommend certified filters meeting NSF and ANSI standards. And number three, screen for chronic exposure symptoms like GI issues or neuropathy, especially in endemic areas. And now some expert advice. Hi, I'm Dr. Haley McDonald, a veterinary cardiologist based in California. Some of you may know me as the Rhythm Vet. Today, we're talking about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in cats. Did you know that feline cardiomyopathy affects approximately one in seven cats with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or HCM being the most common form. HCM is a sarcomeric disease characterized by increased diffuse or regional ventricular wall thickness. The hypertrophy occurs in the absence of loading conditions, infiltrative disease, or metabolic stimuli. On clinical examination, some cats with HCM may exhibit a murmur, arrhythmia, or gallop rhythm, while others may have normal cardiac auscultation findings. Echocardiography is the most sensitive non-invasive method for diagnosing HCM and excluding other causes of myocardial hypertrophy. Classically, HCM is defined by end diastolic echocardiographic measurements of ventricular wall thickness equal to or greater than six millimeters once other causes of left ventricular hypertrophy have been ruled out. Prognosis for cats with HCM is variable. Some remain subclinical and live normal lifespans, but approximately 30% develop severe complications, including left sided congestive heart failure, arterial thromboembolism, ATE, or sudden death. Despite extensive research, no current medical therapy has been proven to delay disease progression, improve quality of life, or provide a survival benefit in the subclinical stage of feline HCM. Recently, attention has been turned to delayed released rapamycin, which modulates the mTOR pathway for its potential to prevent or reverse cardiac hypertrophy in rodent disease models. The RAPACAT trial, a double-blinded, multi-center, randomized, placebo-controlled pilot study evaluated both low and high-dose delayed release rapamycin administered once weekly in client-owned cats with preclinical HCM. After six months, the maximum left ventricular wall thickness was significantly lower in the low-dose group compared with the placebo, and the treatment was well tolerated. These findings suggest that rapamycin may exert antihypertrophic effects. A molecular study supported these results and also demonstrated beneficial effects on autophagy and potential antithrombotic properties. Clinically, these results indicate that delayed release rapamycin may help prevent or delay progressive left ventricular hypertrophy in cats with subclinical HCM. Further, larger scale studies are warranted to confirm and expand upon these findings. This has led to the initiation of the HALT HCM trial, a multi-center, blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled clinical field study conducted in cats with subclinical HCM over 12 months. This study is currently underway. In early 2025, the FDA granted conditional licensing for Sirolimus, the first drug with antihypertrophic properties for cats, under the formulation known as Felicin CA1. If proven effective in treating adverse cardiac remodeling, this therapy could offer veterinarians and cat owners a much needed option for managing ventricular hypertrophy in cats with subclinical HCM, marking a promising step forward in addressing this challenging disease. And now for some of the safety information for Felicin CA1. The most frequently observed adverse reactions in cats treated with Felicin CA1 were cardiovascular in nature, relating to the progression of HCM. Other adverse reactions observed were lethargy, vomiting, diarrhea, and inappetence. Treatment with Felicin CA1 has been associated with the elevation of the transaminase enzymes, which include alanine aminotransferase, ALT, and aspartate aminotransferase, AST. Do not use Felicin CA1 in cats with diabetes mellitus. Pregnant and breastfeeding women should avoid contact with Felicin CA1. 
For complete safety and dosing information, please consult the package insert. Thanks for watching. For more cardio vet tips, follow me at The Rhythm Vet. And that's a wrap for this episode of Vet Candy Watch. For links to all these studies, check our show notes. And until next time, test the water, trust the science, and keep on saving lives like you always do.